throws it down. Wade's been terrific. Keeps it alive. Wade, drive, reverse, and one. Wade with the pretty spin move. What a play from Dwayne Wade. The Miami Heat are once again NBA champions. And the party continues on South Beach as Dwayne Wade and the Miami Heat will be the toast of the town for years to come. Rick Hamla and Steve Smith, who began and ended his NBA career in Miami. And last week, Wade's new book was released. It's called A Father First, How My Life Became Bigger Than Basketball. And Smitty, you recently had a chance to sit down with your former teammate and talk about that book. Yeah, Rick, usually we're talking about number three. We're talking about his game between the lines. This time I got a chance to talk about... Dwayne Wade interviewed the man and also more importantly the father of Zaire and Zion. Let's take a look. D Wade, what inspired you to write this book? Also, to share so much personal information to the world. When I got custody of my boys, I felt that was an important time in my life. And, and I think the response that I got from a lot of dads with a lot of questions, at that moment, I felt that, you know what, I went through this painful <laughs> public um, battle for a reason. And uh, so I wanted to share, you know, my experience of what I went through and, and kind of hopefully, you know, it can be looked at um, for someone to take something out of it, to grab something out of it. Because when I was going through the process, I really didn't have nothing to look at. I had nobody in my position that I could see that won custody of their boys. And with that, I had to share a lot of my experiences from my childhood because I had to show where it came from. So I had to go back to the root you know, of it. And it was very therapeutic for me to go back and think about my childhood and everything that happened. You know, going through your childhood, you know, reading about it and knowing you and seeing your relationship with your sister, Trigil, talk about her. She's been such a big important person in your life yeah she's very important I think um, you know everyone would be so lucky you know to have uh, not only a sister but a friend you know someone like her that she's unselfish it's never about her she always you know is giving to others I even tell her she need to be even more she need to be selfish but that, you know if you're reading the book you know she was unselfish when I was eight or nine years old to take me out of that environment and to put me in a different environment put me in an environment with my father and what she felt that I needed at the time um, I needed, you know, my stepbrothers at the time. I just needed something different because the, the path that I was on my way down and living in Chicago on the south side, you know, was nothing positive going on there. So she wanted to, you know, put me somewhere where she felt that, you know, what he needs his father in his life right now. And it, you know, I owed a lot to her, a lot of credit. What would be your message to your kids that you want them to, you know, think about and reflect as they get older? My mom used to drill that in me when I was a kid. She's always telling me, you know what, your life is bigger than basketball. I never knew what it meant. Until I got, you know, until I got to this stage, and, and basketball has done amazing things for me and my family. And without it, you know, I don't know where we would be. But you know, it's also, it's, it's, it's also took me down different paths, you know, of what I can do in the community, you know, what my voice can do through my experience. And so my message to my kids is the same thing, man. It's just, listen, you know, I want you guys to do whatever in life that y'all want to do, but understand that, you know, you're not just one dimensional that you know you, you have the ability to do and be anybody you want at any given time um, and hopefully they know that. You know I, I was reading this book and I love the pictures. You know I knew Dwayne Wade from the day one when Tom Crean said you would come to Marquette and Dwayne <laughs> Stevens and then I got a chance to play against you and with you in 2005 so I saw the evolution fashion wise you know I was turning and looking. <laughs> Page 150 D-Wade I just want you to look at some of these pictures and, and, and talk about the fashion, fashionable D-Wade oh, at man. age five through high school. I thought I was smooth too on those pictures. You see the one with a brown suit on? That was my favorite suit. I think I got like four pictures in that each different year. I'm from Chicago, so you know the guys in Chicago, they like to dress up and it's a little different, you know, with the hats and the gators and all that. But I kind of grew up in what you call a, a, a city where, you know, people love to dress. So it's kind of inside of me now. I've, flipped it a little bit and put my own spin on things but you know it's just something that I've always loved to do and um, I always felt that when you go to work and when you go to certain places you present yourself a certain way and um, you know in, in the day of age today you don't always have to wear a suit there's other ways to present yourself but so I like to do different things at different times and take chances. You know it's well documented as Wayne Wade the basketball player the daily routine the shoot around the practice take yeah. me through an average day <laughs> of being Dwayne Wade the father to Zaire and Zion what do you guys do? Well, I mean, my days are not average, <laughs> you know, with them. But, you know, it's kind of, you know, let's, let's go through a school day, you know, and 
you know, when I'm there to be able to, say, get up in the morning and take them to school, you know. So it's the rush of, you know, getting up and, and um, you know, eating breakfast with them and, you know, making sure they have everything they need before we get out the door and they go to school and to walk all of them to their class and, you know, make sure you give them that attention in their classroom. And then I go to practice and I come back and it's time for them to get out of school and then you got to go into what they want to do next, you know. Um, you know, study. We got to sit down, we got to study sometime together. Sometime we got to go... Um, you know, they want to play sports. You got to go there. You got to go support them there. Um, and I, I'm raising three boys. I'm raising my nephew as well. So we all got they all got different schedules. So I got to go to a therapy session with my oldest son. It's just so many different different things that are going on that it's, it's challenging. But it's like what I was, I felt like I was born to do. I was bred to be a father. Fantastic stuff. And when when you wear pink pants like that coming into a game you better win the championship <laughs> wade got that done now smitty what did you learn about the man the great dwayne wade from that sit down you like you said it's, a, it's the man we all know about him by the basketball player but i got a chance to learn the journey of him being into fatherhood i got a last i learned a chance to learn about him being a man and, and most importantly i got a chance to learn more about dwayne wade and that he was at peace sharing all this personal information to the world and as a proud father of two boys, what advice would you give to some of the fathers out there in TV land? Well, I think the one advice you would say is don't try not to miss a minute because every minute you miss is, is something that you can't get back. I think being a father is something I wouldn't trade in for anything in the world because once you got a chance to be a father that first day, it changes his life totally. So we're up late taping on Friday night. We're not missing a minute. We're going to be up early Saturday morning with our boys on the ball fields doing our thing as well.